hello hello there welcome to the Amma Manson show so hopefully you are not a stranger here but what goes on here is education definitely some empowerment we add humor information and just a good vibe generally it is not just a talk show it's a live show we talk about life we unpick life We find solutions to the things that stress us in life and we make progress together. It is the Amma Manson Show and my name is Amma, your girl, your educator, your motivator and I kick your hand wherever we need to. Enjoy, invite other people to join in and hopefully you have a wonderful, wonderful experience on today's show. Let's get straight into things. Well, good morning. Welcome to May 2020. May 2020 is a very uh, funny experience. It's a very unique experience in the sense that it's likely in May 2020 that you will find your children behind laptops like that. Or you might even find them behind tablets. And they might even legitimately use their phones. It is very legitimate it is definitely part of what is required for work but it requires a different set of parenting skills and that's what I want to talk to you about listen you cannot make certain assumptions that your child is by default an angel that sets you up for disappointment you cannot assume that your child is a devil that sets you up for prejudice you have to have an open mind anyway and this message is probably more useful to those of you who have teenage kids and older in today's world since we've all been online the people who lurk on internet pages the pedophiles who normally engage children older older children are now getting access to younger children because your children are getting unprecedented access to the internet supervision might be very difficult because I am sat here uh, on online school I'm teaching both of my kids are on computers devices working it depends on the parent it depends on your awareness it depends on your determination to get some sort of lid on this which will make it happen or otherwise so let me talk to you about a few things on any internet browser when you go on the browser you will find history history you should certainly go to the history of your internet browser if you are on google chrome for example it is the fourth tab from the left so you start with file edit view and the next one is history click on history look in the internet history the search history on your child's device It will tell you what they are searching for. It will tell you what they are curious about. It will tell you some things about the child's interest, which might be very beneficial. If your child has been to funny websites, you will see that. You will see that. Some children, as they get older, also learn to delete the internet history. So if you know you have a tricky customer, you might need to have a closer eye on the child whilst they're using the device anyway so my second child for example has episodes where when they are working on the computer they've got to have the screen facing me because this child very very fast will put on some work put on youtube videos whatnot and when you come in she flicks the screen to work when you are not coming she flicks it to whatever So apparently this child has been working for a while, but you look in productivity folders and you don't see any evidence, yes. You might want to look at that. When teachers begin to contact you and tell you that your child is not working, but you see this child on the internet every single minute of every single day, no, don't go back to the teacher moaning and telling the teacher they've got it wrong automatically. Take your time and have a look at the pattern. That might be um, exhibiting itself in your child's life. Your child might be distracted the internet is a huge distraction even for you the adults if you are honest there are many things that take you from social media to traditional media whatnot 
there are certain things that draw your attention away from the things that you should be doing and sometimes you stay on social media for a while and you realize oops that has actually become a little obsessive and that's you an adult if you can't control it how do you expect your little child to control it we've all had to grant access to our children uh, to email we've granted email access unprecedented email access to our children and mind you a lot of people on funny websites have access especially to gmail if your child is using that and a lot of kids are because of google mail uh, google classroom you've got to go in their internet um, their inboxes sometimes have a look and see what activity goes on in their inboxes no no child is born bad no child is born good circumstances raise them to become circumstances enable them to become certain things so it's up to you to make sure for negative things you do not have the enabling environment for it vigilance is the word i have seen many examples i have counseled many families i have dealt with many incidents in school this last couple of months and it comes from parents who might not be aware of certain things there are websites many websites i'm not going to name one you can do a simple search and you can find them where these young kids have been invited to come it's for social networking blah de blah but it's not for social networking it's for pedophile lurking pedophile lurking these something 30 something 40 something year old people have all uh, created 16 year old profiles they all apparently live in california for some reason i don't know why they live in california they live in florida they they've positioned themselves mainly in the East, uh, united states there are other countries i'm only telling you from what i've recently experienced and they invite young girls for conversation they chat to them and the next thing they go is show me yourself blah de blah and yeah they will send them some nudes invite yours to send a nude please believe me that it is so sophisticated your child might not even know where they are being drawn into until they send pictures of themselves now you've got to know that these things are permanent records for your children when your child has sent compromising pictures they are now candidates for blackmail some of your children are actually emotionally tortured by the blackmailers they cannot come to you and tell you because they were not supposed to be on those websites in the first place you've got to have this conversation with your children right now if you've not done it you've got to explain to your children the different types of people who are online the different motives for being online you've got to explain to your kids that anybody who wants to see them especially people who want to see them nude in compromising circumstances is definitely not a friend no they don't love them no they don't love them no they don't fancy them it is these faceless pedophiles who when we grant access to our children are able to blackmail these kids and torture them mentally which can turn their odds completely you've got to sit down and you've got to talk about cyber safety cyber security with your kids sometime soon be open about it allow them to talk look even if a child has made a mistake you've got to take that mistake you've got to also acknowledge that if that mistake happened on your turf you've not been vigilant enough tell the child they've been naive and tell the child you've also not been vigilant enough both of you have got a part to play in what happened both of you have got to move forward with what happened both of you will have to help this child understand how things work and to move on afterwards listen it is important that your child knows the judgment is not what you're doing support is what you are offering because the minute you offer judgment you will know nothing further invite your kids to talk to you if you've ever made mistakes with identity in person or on the cyberspace own up to it tell your kids how easy it is to be drawn in by some of these guys some of these weirdos explain to your child some of the safety uh, mechanisms you've got in place does that instantly guarantee compliance from your child especially if your child is a curious teenager absolutely not 
but you are going to have to work and reinforce and tell your child regularly a person who loves you wants to engage with your mind first a person who wants you wants to get to know you for a long period first they might ask you to switch on the camera but it is to see your face to converse with people who really love you don't typically want to see your knickers the first time you speak people who love you do not want to compromise you and so they don't make certain requests of you those requests are out of order bang out of order and you've got to teach your kids slowly until they realize this your kids might end up on those websites and platforms anyway not much you can do about it if your child is fascinated by some of those things there's nothing much you can do about it all you can do is to teach them to be safe to remain safe to teach them to outwit the pedophiles to teach them to outwit the weirdos by some simple strategies some golden rules make sure that you work with people on the assumption that they might not be who they said that they are on the internet that's a very typical typical outcome so people might not be who they say they are how old they say they are where they say they live the character lurking behind the attractive persona the profile you see might be a nastier character one you might not want to engage with create that awareness with your kids be very cautious of video calling from networks like that because people do record you. People like to get data, leverage, which might be used later to your disadvantage. Don't grant them easily. Don't grant them easily. Uh, personally compromising pictures, images, videos, absolutely not. They might love this person to the moon and back, but they're going to have to learn to do it from their hearts and not from images and not from pictures and not from videos. Teach your kids what happens during blackmail. Go online and show your kids cyber blackmailing. Make them aware of the early signs of cyber blackmailing. Explain to them what makes people vulnerable to cyber blackmailing and help them to watch out for themselves even as they engage with these platforms and you be the supervising adult. Be like a hawk. Be vigilant and watch very closely. Make sure the patterns, emerging patterns, changing patterns are so obvious to you that you don't miss some of these things. It's not a pleasant topic this morning, I have, I'm afraid. I apologize not for it. It is a very important topic. It's one that we should have discussed maybe earlier on in this cyber season. But um, time did not um, allow that to happen. I've only just managed to prioritize it now. So hopefully it's not too late. Not too late for some of you. Especially, I mean, when I was younger, it was the daughters who were the main things and people watched the daughters closely. But these days, it's not just the daughters. Teach your children not to be meeting random people they've met online. Even if they happen to be in the same city. Don't be making arrangements to meet faceless characters. People can meet on, on social networks, but you're going to have to be very careful in vetting the people you meet on social networks even before you extend or accept the invitation to be met personally. And if you choose to do so, it needs to be done with security paramount. People knowing where you are, your whereabouts clearly known, even somebody in the vicinity who can see you both is usually a good thing to do and teach your children these safety strategies so that you give them a chance of survival. It is a jungle out there. It is a jungle out there. It is a jungle whose rules a lot of parents don't even know. It is such a transient gen uh, jungle that it's difficult for the average person who is not tech savvy to stay on top of all these things. And so the guiding principle for me is to teach safety principles to your child. Just in case they find themselves operating in this stage, you do not want naivety to make them prime fodder for abuse. It's Amma, Amma Manson. 
sometimes we discuss good topics sometimes we discuss uh, good difficult topics and this is one of those very important good difficult topics which needs to be discussed we cannot ignore it we just can't and so I do pray and hope that you take this as your cue you do your due diligence vis-a-vis -vis vigilance and also take on the education mantra and help your children stay safe catch you soon goodbye